The song that you will always be you know, remembered for, I suppose, is I'd like to teach the world to sing. And, and uh, it really is uh, the most amazing thing, I think, to have to have a song like that connected with someone for, for literally the whole of your life. I mean, you must look back on that and think, you know, that, that's, that's something you can never take away from me. Could never take it away, and I, I, I still enjoy singing it. Um, and, that, and that's the thing, um, for instance, about this album uh, and, and the, the one that I did, I did a, one about 12 years ago. And having come to Scotland, you know, it seems my career, <laughs> my solo career, it was here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I left home all these years ago. <laughs> but, uh, you know, to, to, um, to be able to sing songs that I like, I'm picking songs because I like them, not because, oh, let's do that because it fits into the country or pop or whatever category it is just doing songs that that um that i really like uh and the thing about teach the world is i never get tired of doing it because every time i sing it there's a different audience or it's a different night even if it was the same audience it'd be a different night so it feels different it always feels new and that's the same with every song that i sing it's always in a different place or it's a different time or a different audience so there's something fresh about it or it's just the way I feel it's just you know it's just always new. it's just because I like singing <laughs> and of course I mean all this this new material that you're doing as well it's almost like a uh, a reboot of the Eve Graham career, if you like, isn't it? The, this new album, etc. And it, it's come as, as a bit of a surprise to a lot of people, a very pleasant surprise that you've been able to go back in the studio again. And, and uh, you know, I'm sure it's not going to be your last album that you that you ever do, but certainly um, the album itself, you know, a matter of time and slipping away in particular, um, you're finding a new audience almost. I, I'd like to think so, and and it seems. I mean, this is a, a a a new direction. It seems to be getting to to new places. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to say. I mean, it's the first time that 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 we've met, and I know that you know you're going to be uh, letting other people see this that uh, I've never heard me speak before or <laughs> didn't know that I was Scots or <laughs> didn't know I could still sing didn't know I was still alive <laughs> and I think that that is, is the, the, the good thing I, I found it therapeutic to, to start singing again I did think that I wouldn't sing anymore and when I had the thought of singing and wanting to do another album my first question was to question myself, was to question my ability to sing well enough because obviously at my age I'm not going to sing as well as I did 50 years ago but uh, I've had a damn good try. Oh, and it sounds and pretty good to me. I, I, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the result. and I can only do it if, I, if I'm with David. Uh, uh, David Mackay uh, beside me... Uh, uh, it's it's not just a case of spurring me on, but it's more a case of stopping me if I'm not doing as well as I could. He's always been very good at giving me a boot up the what's it uh, and and telling me that I'm not you know if I'm not getting it right um, and and that that encourages me because I feel that I can I can freely express myself because he'll he'll tell me if I'm if I'm losing the place. So when you first realised that this song was beginning to climb the, the country charts and, uh, you know, you haven't been in the charts for a wee while and, and all of a sudden slipping away is uh, is doing very, very well and then the video's out now, etc. And, and, and the song is being enjoyed by a lot of new people. That, that must make you feel really happy. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted. I, I'm absolutely thrilled. Uh, I, I, it wasn't what I expected. It's, it's not why I did the album in the first place. I, I needed to do it f for myself. I needed to do it to uh, uh, probably b uh, boost my morale a little, a little bit, just get me back into living a, a, a little bit. I, I, you know, I've been three years on, on my own now, and, and I'm very lucky, you know, because um, most people at 75 is, are sitting, staring at four walls, thinking, this is it, you just wait until the lights go out. But, you know, to be able to still have something that I can do and it seems still do well, 
I, I just, you know, I'm just so thrilled. What's the secret then? Because you, you said yourself that you're 75. You don't look 75 at all. You look fit and healthy and you're walking about happily and running about with dogs and stuff. Um, you know, <laughs> I, you've still I, got I'm your voice. I'm not sure about the running. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you're obviously doing something something right. I, I mean, do, do you kind of have a, have a fitness regime or something? Or, or do you no, just... I'm not, absolutely yourself? not. No, no. no, no. So, there's, uh, so there's, you can't give me any secrets then or, or any well, advice? <laughs> I always put it down to good whiskey and bad men. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm joking there. No, yeah. I, I, but um, <clears throat> I, 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 it was, uh, I'm flattered, of course, at what you've said, but it's not the first time uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll understand that, that um, I've been paid a compliment like that. It is in the genes, fortunately, uh, that I seem to be wearing reasonably well. Uh, I, I tend not to put on weight, but I, I do walk up the hill. I've got a, quite a big garden. So walking, gardening, um, although I'm having a bit of trouble now doing... I want to do more than I can do now, but uh, I'm so, I'll, I'll just have to sing a bit more and get my lungs going a bit more as well. <laughs> And of course, with this new success uh, with the song and the album, etc., people want to see you live as well. So, what's the situation there at the moment? Well, there was to be a tour last year, and I, I was going to be going out with Dominic Kerwin and Barry Kerwin, but uh, they they had to uh, pull out. Uh, Dominic Kerwin had a, a health problem, I, th- I think. Um, nothing, t- t- no- nothing serious, but uh, enough that he, c- he couldn't travel on that tour. Uh, and that meant stopping that. So uh, I'm hoping that the promoter, well, I think the promoter is looking out for another vehicle, maybe f- for, for, for me. Um, so I'm, I'm staying open minded. But uh, I, I, I think, you know, so much has happened so fast because it's 12 years since the last album that I did. And as I say, I just initially did this one. I started off wanting to do just one or two tracks. And I ended up doing a whole album once I discovered I could sing. And uh, David, of course, set the, the time aside for me. Um, still being able to work with him, of course, it, 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 to me, is the bottom line. Um, and uh, I, I, I think I've always been a fatalist, so I'll just keep an open mind and see what happens next, see if you want me anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they do, I'm sure they do. But, I mean, obviously... Um... The New Seekers days were, were, were fantastic. Yeah, the experience that you had of uh, number one records, top of the pops appearances, uh, obviously the Eurovision Song Contest where you came runners up as well. Lots of hit records. Uh, you know, people will always go on remembering you as part of, of the New Seekers. But of course, the flip side of the success as well was, and this happened a lot with 60s bands and 70s bands as well, was, you know, the, the poor contracts that, uh, that the artists... Uh, signed and um, are now kind of paying for effectively because it's always the writers that get the the money and the artists don't get a penny Um, you must look back on that with kind of mixed feelings oh they're not mixed (laughs) (laughs) mixed feelings in terms of the success obviously of the and the performances Uh but then the flip side obviously Yeah, yeah yeah As as we say, uh, we got all the glory and the managers got all the money. (laughs) Yeah, we we were before the days of showbiz lawyers. Uh, It was was sort of, well, while we were still working, I think, you started to hear about people who were being represented by a lawyer, by by a solicitor, who specifically looked after the artist's interests and, and, you know, they were managing them but but also knew the, the legal... Jargon. Whereas we were signing contracts that that uh, you know they had holes all through them and and didn't leave us with anything at all. Uh, so initially there were some royalties coming in and then it all kind of fiddled away and we we don't know where it goes and something gets um, signed over to somebody else and we can't keep up with it. You know the artist can't can't keep up with it. So you end up with with no royalties. But. Um, all I can say now, yes, it did make me bitter, uh, like everybody else. You know, for a long time, you you feel frustrated because 
you don't know what to do about it because you you can't afford a, <laughs> one of these expensive showbiz lawyers. They don't want to chase your money because very likely they have to chase your money from somebody that they are doing other deals with th for somebody else. So that they're not, they're not going to want to be on your side because you're a nobody compared with the the somebody else that they're uh, doing a positive deal with. So you find yourself not getting anywhere to tr to try and reclaim any uh, uh, of these m monies. So you have to move on. But it, but it is very hard. You do get very bitter. Having reached this point in my life, I can look back now, though, and say that most of the people who did have a lot of money that came from my time spent it all, lost it all, drank themselves to death, went on drugs, did what, you know. I, there's not that many of them that, that came out of it and, and uh, made another life with the money <laughs> somehow. Um I've always lived frugally anyway, so as a lifestyle, I'm not sure what I would have done differently anyway. If I had had the money, what would I have done? I've got a nice house, I've had a, a nice life, I've got my dogs. Um, the only thing I haven't got, of course now, is, is my husband. And, uh, you know, I, I can't blame that on money. <laughs> so, y you know, I, th I think... All in all, if I had to choose anything to be different, it wouldn't be the money I'd want back.